everybody, it's Moon again, and today I'm going to be covering one of my favorite authors, Charles Swart. Many of you have been asking us to talk about Book of the Damned, but it's a pretty long list of subjects, so I just decided to choose one idea and sort of pick it apart. So for those who don't know, The Book of the Damned is a unique collection of anomalies written by Charles Fort in 1919. It was one of the early conspiracy books in the way that it really questioned the acceptable narratives of both orthodox science and religion. Charles managed to accumulate a hefty list of unexplainable events that brought many questions to the mainstream narrative. Not only does he go over the events himself, but he often includes the reactions of the people who witnessed them as well as the official conclusions, and then offers up sort of his own ideas and hypothesis. Such events as falling objects from the sky or unexplainable floating objects for days at a time, they bring to question the very nature of the realm that we live in. So join us together as we explore the strange world of Book of the Dam. Part 1. Goo Falling from the Sky On a rainy day in Wilna, Lithuania, during the spring of 1846, locals were stunned to find nut-sized masses of a gelatinous substance. In its wet state, it was odorless, but when it was burned, a Swedish smell was said to emit from it. It was described as a more firm gelatin. It's also assumed that the time spent in the rain swelled the grayish jelly to be even more viscous. Another report of a similar phenomena comes from Asia Minor during the years of 1841 and 1846. In notes and queries, it's said that in early August of 1894, thousands of shilling-sized jellyfish covered the ground in Bath, England. It's assumed that a whirlwind carried these creatures and dropped them on Bath. Around that same time, small frogs had landed in Wigan, England. Years later, In June of 1911, in the area of Eton, Bucks, England, the ground was blanketed in masses of pea-sized jelly after heavy rainfall. They too were eggs of some species of lake fly, as they hatched not long after. Time and time again, we have reports of all kinds of misplaced substances on the ground, usually attributed to rainfall activating something that was already present on the ground or brought to this area by a whirlwind that flew by in the dark of the night. But there are other times where that isn't the case. A few cases of gelatinous goo falling from the sky after meteorites were seen in skies are specifically interesting. Some of these accounts took place where nostoc or reptile eggs would have been out of season, so to speak. Charles Fort muses upon the idea that the meteorite could be ripping through a goo-like substance and bringing it down to Earth in the cases where the goo is found in the same time frame as a meteorite is spotted. To me, this implies that he's toying with the idea that our atmosphere is some sort of membrane, perhaps like that of an egg or fungus. In a newspaper report, it said that clumps of white jelly that resembled the coagulated white of an egg were found in lumps in the ground in Rahway, New Jersey. These stories reminded me of the cosmic egg motif that span across many cultures, not just the masses of goo, but the actual eggs that fell from the skies, fish eggs, frog eggs, bug eggs, it's all very strange and seems to have some sort of connection. I wanted to go down the train of thought that I had while thinking about the egg symbolism in our world in reference to what we call the matrix. The film gives what I think is a modernized symbolic representation, and the prefix ma is like matriarchy or mama. The general shape of the matrix is a bunch of stems with eggs on the ends. It reminds me a lot of grapes or berries. The word berry itself reminds me of the act of childbearing, and it very much reminds me of the Phoenician statues with the multi-breasted women. It's no surprise that the female sex produces eggs in all known species. Roundness is overall associated with femininity, whether it be the body, our architecture, or even our cosmology. It could be that our world is a sphere, or even an oblong sphere, like we're told, but purposely misrepresented. We are told that we live on a spinning rock in our solar system, and a system is a word that sounds vaguely familiar, like sister, but with stem on the end. We live in the Milky Way, on Mother Earth, and in a, forgive me, country. The way I see it is we live in a multi-layered reality within a floating sphere or egg, but we could be floating in plasma or some sort of cosmic web or membrane type substance instead of just empty darkness. Maybe it's called the 
aether, or astral thread. If we consider the mycelium network, it has countless strands with spherical egg-like concentrations in certain areas. The same pattern is seen throughout the human nervous system and in the webs of spiders, which is a whole separate train of thought that I do plan to go down soon. However, to me that implies that we are actually connected in some way to other worlds. Maybe we have yet to hatch, or maybe we hatch and unhatch on a timer. I know it's a pretty crazy thought, but that old saying, as above, so below, as within, so without, and the very concept of a fractal reality, it just triggers a lot of interesting thought pathways. Take a look at this mycelium network that grew on this tree stump. Doesn't it remind you of a place Plato spoke about? I think that the point of all this is asking questions about the nature of physical reality. And all these bizarre accounts of strange goings-on, paired with a lack of satisfying explanations, lies a deeper question. Could it be because the actual truth of the matter defies what we're told to believe about the nature of our world? Is the nature of our world obscured purposely so that only a few can reap the benefits of knowing how things actually work? In the book The Crystal Egg, the main character is able to see a world within the egg. I can't help but wonder, was the egg some sort of visual portal, or was the egg the world itself, at the mercy of whoever held it in their possession? Could it be that our world is something beyond our comprehension? Or can we see examples of our world in the microcosmos within the scope of our own observable existence? If it really is like an egg, it would make sense that, if it were to become cracked a little bit, pieces of its shell or membrane would make its way into our reality. It's also strange to me that a lot of the goo in these stories was in fact eggs that came from some other species. Maybe it's some sort of weird coincidence that sparked a crazy train of thought about eggs, or maybe our world is just a lot more bizarre than we're willing to believe. But that's all for now. I think next time I'm going to go over floating cities. So if you guys have any recommendations of cool movies that have floating cities in them, I'd love to know. And I really look forward to um, going m deeper into Book of the Damned because it's a really excellent book. Um, and you can get it free here on YouTube. Uh, there's a free audiobook. You can just listen to it whenever, even if it's not maybe something you believe 100%. It's just really cool to hear a different perspective on the world. So I definitely recommend checking it out and maybe enjoy it. So yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed making this short video and we'd love to hear all your thoughts. Also, I wanted to thank all of you who've been watching us for a while and also welcome any new people to the channel. I hope you all have fun watching our videos and developing your own ideas. Thanks again for all the support, and may our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?